Focus, dedication, persistence. These are the virtues of every grassroots drag racer. Many travel hundreds of miles for their shot at winning Pink's All Out's $10,000 grand prize. But few have shown the devotion and single-mindedness of George Rubastello. Always one of the first to arrive, he's become a familiar face to the Pink's All Out crew. And on his ninth try, after 10,000 miles, George's perseverance may finally pay off. Come on, George! Come on, George! They call it Thunder Valley. This track's between two big ass mountains and it's just as loud as hell here. I live about three or four miles away and you can actually hear it off my back porch. The mountains around you and then when you go down the middle, it sounds like thunder. Here, just listen, it'll echo from off the backside for a good, I've counted for a minute and 30 seconds. So the track kept the name Thunder Valley. And Pink's All Out has returned to this historic track in Bristol, Tennessee to give grassroots drag racers a shot at winning some real money. All right, are we ready for a little pink all out? What do you say? All right. Uh, very simple proposition. You have one thing to do, and that's go. How many eighth mile racers do we have here today? OK, look to your left and right. You don't want to be next to that person who just rose his hand. We don't have a 20 mile an hour win, so we're going to be just fine. You guys will be good. But remember, push it all the way to the finish line. That's you eighth mile racers. That's all you need to know. Line up and race and just kind of put your car where your mouth is. That's what we're really looking for. Because today, it's really not about trying to beat the system. It's about earning $10,000 cash at the end of the day. Bristol Dragway's full quarter mile track draws adventurous local racers looking to break out of the eighth mile bracket. Normally run eighth mile. We're first time on quarter mile. Where I'm at, the eighth mile is all the run, so it's all, no flat land. It's all mountains. So let me ask you, are you used to running quarter mile or an eighth mile? Used to run an eighth, eighth mile? Have you done any changes to it? So yes. this quarter, what'd you do? I put a 410 gear in, took a 513 out. Okay, yeah, yeah, smart. I've been bracket racing for a while, but never anything quarter mile. I'm getting more into the heads up. Bracket racing, one of you gonna have a head start. You know, I, I don't like that too well. Don't bracket race. Bracket racing for babies. So do you prefer quarter mile racing? I do personally. So why do you prefer quarter mile over eighth mile racing? More speed. The racing at Pinks is so much different than racing class racing. I don't believe in running throttle stops or anything like it. You just floor it and hang on. <laughs> what about the gearing? The gearing, we run the same gear eighth mile to quarter. Yeah. I don't run a lot of gear in the car, yeah. and um, which is uh, probably a good thing. So it should you do that mainly to calm it down for the right. little tires. Yeah, we calm it down on the little tires, so it really eats on the other yeah. end. So, um, it, so actually, quarter mile may be good for it. Oh yeah, you really like the quarter mile. Really like it. Hundreds of anxious racers, many facing a quarter-mile track for the first time, arrive at Bristol Dragway and go headlong into the first of two qualifying rounds. Round one pits man against machine as the racers launch off the four-tenths pro tree. I just like, hey, the light comes down, you both leave, and first one of the finish line wins. Rich rolls out for round two, ready to test the racers against his arm drop. Definitely gonna <clears throat> learn Rich's arm drop. I like the old fashioned style. You know, I got a little age on me. I like the arm drop. The last hopefuls finish their qualifying passes and then wait for timing and scoring ref Brian Basson to calculate the results, where he determines the fight for $10,000 has come down to the tried and true all motor muscle cars of the low tens and high nines. And he handpicks the closest set to race in the 64 car runoff. All right, racer. Here we go. You're not going to believe this. The first car is car one. Yeah. yeah. Go get to your car right now. No, I got here early. It was the first one here. And car number one to get in. See that? Car 355. 355. Get to your car. Hope everything stays together and we can driver don't mess up and everything turns out real well. Car 383. 
Three, good job. Head for your car. $10,000, baby. That's right. It's going to be mine. Car 359. All right, head for your car. That's my seventh one. And I'm finally yeah. going to get in one yeah. of these. Car 13. Yeah, stay right here. Yeah, two, right there. <laughs> that's, that's good. I was picked for the 32 in, in West Palm Beach, and I broke after my, my qualifying pass. Car 81. Yeah. Wow. That was a good one. All wearing the pink shirt, that's great. We just got these made. We just got them when we left Thursday. We just got them. And the last car in the competition for $10,000 is car 131. Go. 131, we're ready to go racing. That's what it's all about. Get in and get done. The chosen racers rendezvous with their cars and crews to gear up for the Bristol Dragway 64 car runoff. It's a different feeling. I'm used to eighth mile. Leave quick and on the arm drop, and run it wide open all the way past the finish line. Once you get going over 100 mile an hour, you start feeling in your gut. But it's a great feeling. Hey, you ready? We're going to run you right now, OK? All right, so y'all be ready. It is time for 64 cars to become 32. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Let's race! These 64 contenders take to the Thunder Valley starting line ready to raise some smoke and send some noise echoing through the Bristol Mountains. That's the time to get nervous now, I really am. Got my son here with me. Yeah. Makes it even special. Never believed I'd be in a place like this today. Uh, I've got a bum leg. Uh, I've got it bandaged, but I can still match the gas. My whole family's here, it's great. This is one of the, this will be a uh, very memorable experience. I'll never forget it. 32 hopefuls lose out. Oh, shit! But for the victors, yeah. they motor right back in line for the start of the 32 car runoff. We're good to go. So I'm hoping to go all the way today. Seen a wall and got down there, thought I lost. Next thing I know, he said I won. I don't, still don't know what happened. The other guy must have jumped. Take it anyway and get it. You gotta get lucky one now and then. Hey Rick, you wanna know what's really cool? Is all the teams all around their cars doing all the fuel, doing all the battery charging, making sure everything's ready. That's how it works. Here we go. Chevy, Chevy, show down. First big event, right here. This will be the first one.
I'm great. Yeah. This is the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Here are your pinks all out 16. We hope you're enjoying your time at Thunder Valley. Quarter mile newbies battled pinks all out vets, narrowing the field down to only 16. Can't breathe. <laughs> Shoot, I take a breath away. Go down. That 10 grand has my name on it. Yeah, well, the real competition begins now. Let's do this. Let's make some money. I get a little excited. I had a tendency to have a failure between the short, between the steering wheel and the seat, you know what I mean? This is my name in Fortnite mode. He's here to chew, or cheer us on. He's excited. We're all excited. Y'all doing all right? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. <laughs> All right, congratulations, racers. You are our Wix Filters All Out 16, so congratulations for making it this far. Right In your Wix box is a $550 gift certificate for a hat, a t-shirt. Go online and get all the great Wix filter products that you want. But now it gets serious. Now it's winner versus winner versus winner. So there should be no excuse. You know you have to be perfect in order to get to the finish line first. There's really nothing I can tell you, except now is the time to focus and run the best race of your life. It's time, so here we go. Get to your cars and let's race. Here we go. Yeah, I'm down to 16 and I'm strapped in the car getting ready to go. The remaining 16 zero in on the task at hand. I'm so excited for you. I know, I'm here. Yeah, it is. Getting to the finish line first, earning their spots in the U.S. Army All Out 8 and pocketing $500 cash. Keep your head in the game, watch your arm drop, and you've got it from there. That rookie against the nine time veteran. All right, get him off. Hey, man. We're going to rock and roll, buddy. We're going to rock and roll. Remember, it's just you and Rich. You don't worry about that guy. I ain't worried you. about him. All right, Willie. Let's go with our 16. All right, here we go. Car number 156 in the left hand lane is Brady Horn, rolling 73 Vega. Him and his dad built this as a father son project. Well, the first week I had it, I didn't have Willie bars on it. I almost flipped the car back. So that's about the only thing. Been interesting. In the right hand lane, he's going to get Mike in a 1974 event. He's owned the car for a couple years, been pinks seven times. This is the first time he's made it into All Out 16. I, I try to make a routine out of it and just concentrate. I come too long, too far, to seven pinks, I don't want to go home. Not without the 10 grand. Coming up, one racer swerves out of the groove and straight into trouble. Gonna end up wrecking that thing. And later, a finish that redefines close. That is the closest race I've ever witnessed, Rich. It's the first race of the Wix Filters All Out 16 at Bristol Dragway. felt awesome. I didn't think I was even going to get on the show, you know. It's great. About the thousand foot mark, I looked over and I didn't see him. I knew I had it. But I think I treat him. He just barely pulled me, and uh, but he beat me. Who do we got, Will? Check this out, Rich. You're going to love this story. This is Jordan, the 6372. He's traveled over 10,000 miles to come and play at Pink's All Out. I want to win, you know? I want to win. I've been at it now, you know, nine times, 10,000 miles later. I'm due, I think. In the right lane, Kenneth Sweeney, 88 Mustang. For the Ford lovers, he's rolling underneath the hood, a small block Chevrolet, a hybrid. I had some kids tell me, they said, hey, man, they said, uh, that's one of them Chevy Mustangs. And I just looked at him, you know, and he told the other kid, he said, yeah. He said, they didn't make many of those. And the other kid said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Couple more to go. It was great. Just yeah. gotta keep focused, you know, and keep treeing rich. I had her to the floor, she was all out. 
you know, I guess sometimes it just goes like that, you know, but hey, I had a great time. All right, Willie, who do we got? All right, in the left-hand lane, we have Jerry. He's riding a 93 Mustang GT with a big black Ford 28 under the hood. He cut up a couple cars to make that car. Uh, we bought the car, it was total, hit in the front. We basically cut it apart, took two cars and made one. Then we built a race car out of it. Joining us, it's a 1971 Mustang. This car has been in the family since 1974. Actually, the title of this car is still in his grandmother's name. The car has four-wheel drum brakes. It's hard to get stopped. But it, it, it's, it's fun until I have to get on the brakes. And the track comes up really quick. I'm still in shock. I'm still in shock. I just got to keep going off the orange drop. Whoever leaves first is going to win. The car broke on that run, so even if I had a one, I couldn't have. I couldn't have raced again. So it all worked out the way it was supposed to work out. All right, Willie, who do we got? All right, in the left lane, Frankie Denton, 1970 Nova. He just put the big block in his car last Thursday. First time running a quarter mile was yesterday. And we just got it put together. I didn't have the motor in it Thursday. Uh, got a phone call invited to come up. So we rushed to put it together and bam. He's going against Chris Birchfield from Tennessee in a 1972 Kuna. He blew the engine about a year ago. Spent this last year recovered it. I love Mopars. I work on them. I restore them. I like Challengers, Kudas, Roadrunners. Anything to do with Mopar, I love them. <laughs> Just do what I've been doing, I reckon. Don't change nothing. I run it all out. I blow the top radiator hose on my car, and she got really hot. Started getting a little squirrely at the top end, and uh, he come around. All right, Willie, who do we got? All right, here we go. In the left-hand lane, we have Dana Lunsford in an 84 Mercury Capri. First time in the driver's seat was yesterday. He borrowed the car. This car doesn't belong to me. It belongs to a buddy of mine. I didn't get my car finished in time, and. So we brought this one over. He's going to get a 1967 Camaro. This is his first fix. Says this guy never lifts, and he's ready to prove it, Rich. You go through the eighth, and everything's humming, and you're feeling like you're flying, and by God, you get on the quarter mile, it's rolling. I mean rolling. Feels like a wind is going to come in on you. Coming up, an old score is settled on the track. This is going to settle it. And later, this one's for the record books. We have the closest race in Pink's history. It's race five of the Wix Filters All Out 16 at Bristol Dragway. Gonna end up wrecking that thing. I don't know about the stuff in the wall, though. I took an arm drop, and I treated him, and uh, never seen him again. I just run it all the way out the back door and held it 200 foot past the lights. Something on the track. How can, he, how can he get out of it that bad and not there be something on the track? Yeah. Right here. Oh, that's oil. That's oil. I don't think it's going to be much of a cleanup, but still, just to be on the safe side. Well, tell me about your race. Well, the, when we left the line, the car went left toward the wall. We had to get out of it, got back in, and it went to the left again. So I don't know. You know why, right? I don't know. Yeah, you threw a little oil down. So your tires got in that, went, went up against the wall, and that was it. It's tough luck. Willie, uh, we've got through a few cars already, got through a few rounds. We're getting closer to the pink all out eight. So here is Mike in the 1948 Austin Dorset. 
The slowest to fastest pass with Mike has been eight hundredths of a second. Very consistent. Heads up, 48 Austin. They're set. I call it mode because it's made of everything. In the right lane, it's even better. Bill in this 1974 Cuda has only been up two hundredths of a second all day. The experience was something I'll never forget, and I wanted more of it. And I'm fortunate enough to get in the show tonight, and I just couldn't be happier. This is, this is everything a racer really dreams about. This is the third time these two cars have met. For the first race, Bill won. The second time, Mike right here in the Austin door set one. It's a one-to-one -one matchup, and we're selling it right here, right now, at Thunder Valley. This is gonna settle it. Let's see who settles the grudge. Will it be the left lane or the right lane for a bragging rights? Here we go. Pretty awesome. Stop. I was worried about the oil on the track from before, but things cleaned up good. I feel good. I feel excited. My car worked good. Did a nice wheel stand, and uh, I had him on a tree. And that's all I could do. What do you got, Will? All right. In the left lane, we have Tim Fields in a 68 big black Camaro. He's only had a car for a couple of decades. Once his mom and dad pay for all of it because he's a teacher, says he can't afford it. Good old country boy, teacher. So, Lord knows we're not getting paid a whole lot. So. <laughs> All right, this lane we have Eric Jett, the 1970 Chevelle. Bought the car as a roller for a couple hundred bucks. Now he's got his stuff painted, redone, and ready to rumble. It peaks all out. It's been set for about 15 years before I got it. I haven't been raced at all. Bought it, painted it, put an engine in it. Here we are. Straight on Rich. As soon as he flinched, I turned it loose. Felt like I got a pretty good jump. I looked over and I seen I had a car land on him pretty quick. So had her against the fire a while and held it there. Great race. Car's just a little faster. I run that car flat out all day. That's it. Made it to 16. No problems. Let's take a look at this last race. Who do we got? All right, a 71 Vega Chris Blair underneath the hood. Small black Chevy. His grandfather bought this car, passed away. Him and his dad continue to build. He says he races with his grandfather every time. I've got a picture of him in there on my dash, so he rides with me every time going to another track. I think he would be happy. Now we have Stephen Moore in an 88 Mustang, powered by a 460 big block Ford. He's owned a car for a couple years. Stephen and his dad built this one as well. Well, this is my fourth pinks. And uh, my dad was born and raised in the Bristol area. And it's just like coming back to your roots, you know? Coming up, oh! it simply can't get any closer than this. 1,320 feet, and it was won by one inch. And later, George Rubastello's out to make his ninth time the charm. It's the last race of the Wix Filters All Out 16 at Bristol Dragway. Listen to this, folks. We have the closest race in Pink's history. One. 
5.2 inches. Five ten thousandths of a second. Good race. That is the closest race I've ever witnessed, Rich. 1,320 feet, and it was won by one inch. 1.2 inches, a new record in Pink's history. While it appears in this photo finish that Stephen Moore's 88 Mustang nosed out Chris Blair's 71 Nova, it's not the hood that triggers the wind light, it's the front tire. But even with that in mind, this race was so incredibly close, it's hard to tell without taking another look. I pulled early, he pulled late. We was like, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be at the finish line. I started cheering a little early and I was like, uh-oh, he's pulling pretty hard, so I knew it was going to be close. I feel like I pushed my luck on that one, to be honest. A little disappointed, but that's racing, you know? Doesn't matter whether it's by an inch or a mile, somebody's got to lose. That jaw-dropping milestone finish brings the Wix Filters All Out 16 to an end and kicks off the start of the U.S. Army 8, the best 10-second class racers at Thunder Valley fighting for a spot in the all-out four and $750 cash. This has probably been the fastest day that I've ever lived in my life. Just getting everything together and, you know, you think an hour and a half break, that went by like it was five minutes and then you're back right doing the same stuff all over again. We're lucky that Chris's car doesn't require a lot of charging, so, so that's, um, that, that's a good thing. This is the first pass with it. The car yeah. was in a bunch of pieces in the garage Thursday, and we got a phone call to me in Pinks, and we just started putting it back together. What a time. What a track. We've broken out in a sweat. It's a cool night. You know, we've been running back and forth, and we're so happy to be here. All right, congratulations, racers. You are our US Army 8. All you are receiving $500, but more importantly, your opportunity to move on for the Pinks All Out 4. Ken, for the first pairing, who are you looking for and why? First pair is Brady and Ed. Why you're putting them together? And these guys are only two hundredths apart, so you're dead even. Okay. Dead. Yeah. Only two one hundredths apart. Now they're six. Who do you like for the next race? Mr. Nine Times, George. Hey, George. <laughs> and then Chris, 89. 89. Car 89. Okay. Now, Ken, why George and Chris? George is deadly consistent because he's done this so many times. Chris is our other most consistent racer, so the guy that's probably got the best shot to give George a good challenge is Chris. All right, now George, you have a heck of a story. You put on how many miles traveling doing pinks? 10,000 miles. Ladies and gentlemen, George, literally, this is his ninth pinks and traveled over 10,000 miles following routes in the country. That's the kind of dedication that's simply the best. So George, from all of us, thank you so oh, much for being on pinks and, and sticking out. Okay, Kenneth, there are now four. Who do you like for the next round? Now number three. We've got Frankie and Mike. Okay, why Frankie and why Mike? Actually, I picked this race because Willie wanted to see it. But yeah, I wanted to see the Nova against the, uh, the Austin because he's been consistent and he's had the worst luck. This guy just built his, his motor last Thursday, got it in his first quarter mile passes. People with the worst luck tend to have the best luck in the final rounds. And then there were two. Where's my final two? Step in. We have Chris and Tim. All right, Kenneth, why? You know what, actually, we picked these guys because they left exactly the same on your arm drop. For, for to, be, to, to be dead even off my arm drop, that's what this race is all about, is the start, the launch. Hey, I'm going to leave it right there, all right? Please, gentlemen, the best of luck. Shake hands, and let's get to your cars. This next race is for $750, but more importantly, a spot in the pinks all for $10,000 on the line. Stay calm. Oh, man, I'm just relaxed as I can be, man. Well, this one right here is going to be the toughest one. But nobody's going to beat you. If, if I can train him, we're good. Willie, who do we got? All right, Rich. In the left lane, we have Brady Horn in the 1973 Vega. It's a father-son project. Who says racing doesn't keep families together? Well, it's running my family past all my life, and I just got into it after my dad stopped racing. He got me a car. And I've been racing about two years now. We have Ed in the right lane in a 71 Mustang, small block, 351 Cleveland. This car has been in the family since 1974, Rich. I've seen all the other cars run. They're quicker than me, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to trail them. That's really the only, only chance I have.
together, and at half track he was ahead of me, and uh, he probably broke traction more than I did, and uh, I started pulling away from him. I had him good off the line again, but just got out of the groove just a little bit and had to fight the car the whole way. He just got me on the big end. All right, Rich, for the second race in the U.S. Army 8, we have George Rafastello in the left lane in the 1963 Chevy 2. This is his ninth peak, and this is the furthest he's ever gotten. Tree and Rich all day, so I just got to keep on my game, you know? Keep my head focused. And I'm focused. In the right lane, we have Chris in the 71 Vegas small block Chevy. I got to try to guess when he's coming down, be all coming off the button wherever he's coming down. I can't wait till he starts down. It's not going to happen. Good race. I, I I think I treat him, and you know, and I just really never saw him. He just had a little more, a little more motor than I did, but you know, you got to win gracefully and lose gracefully. So I'm happy. In the left lane, we have Frankie in the 1970 Nova powered by a 496 cubic gets big block Chevrolet. Just unreal. I can't wait to get it over with. Him, you know? Ready to get on with it. He's going to get to the Austin Dorset. Mike Yunker behind the wheel with a small black Chevy under the hood. A Pink's veteran rich and ready to rumble. Chevy Nova, the orange one, he's pretty quick. I'm going to have to be on my toes for him. Come on, boys. Here we go. good race. He might have got me a little bit on tree. And he was just faster than I was. Awesome, man. I mean, God. Through the eighth, then I started pulling the other end. Felt good. Yes. Yes. And the final race, we have Chris Smith in 1967 Camaro 540 cubic against a big block Chevy. Says if he wins the $10,000, he's going to buy his wife some new shoes. <laughs> I'm just going to hold it wide open, run it all out the back door. I'm going to run it 100 feet past the, past the lights. He's going against Tim Fields in the 1968 Camaro, 468 cubic against the Big Block Chevrolet. He's a teacher. His parents would be paid for the march. He said if he wins, he writes them a check. Just going to be up to the driver, you know, keep Alan rich, and uh, just, you know, focusing on him. Car stay together. Lord will, and everything will work out. Oh, good. Good. Coming up, George is on a roll, but can his winning streak be stopped? The car's running flawless. You know what? It's racing. Anything can happen. And later, it's giant against giant. We have two big blocks going to battle, Rich. It's the fourth race of the U.S. Army All Out 8 at Bristol Dragway. He's moving on. I left on him and I left out the window and I seen him pulling on, coming on me on top end. I thought, come on, track, just, you know, finish line, be your hurry. So uh, we nudged him out a little bit on top end. On that last pass, I just got tree and uh, he outrun me. Uh, the best racer definitely won. It's now come down to the final four. Well, I mean, it's just uh, unbelievable that we're this far. I got this far. The cars are pretty much dead equal. Uh, I don't know what the cooler temperature is going to do to them compared to today. Man, I'm, I'm actually thinking I might have a shot at it now. The car is running great. The car is running flawless. But you know what? It's racing. Anything can happen. Tim, Ed, George, and Frankie, congratulations. Here is $750 for your time. All right, the pot keeps growing. This next race, 
will be for $1,000, but more importantly, your opportunity, your 50% chance at $10,000. All right? Kenneth, what is your plan of attack for these final two races to get to the finals? All right, we wanted to pair George and Ed. And why those two? And, and actually, it's the same deal. All these guys are dead evenly matched. Who made this possible for you to, to travel and do what you do? My wife. She supports everything I do. And I wish you the best of luck, OK? Ed, so uh, what's it going to take, do you think, to take out what would probably be one of our giants on Pink Cell Out? I was going to have to beat him on the tree. You are, you are perfect. You're Mr. Consistent. And Kenneth, we have Frankie and Tim. One 100 separates you two, all right? Your day is from this morning till tonight. It's been great. I mean, I've been real calm and just relaxed. Just like I, I felt something was going to happen. Good. And it seems to be happening. That feeling is what <laughs> is magic. Same. You know, having a pretty bad weekend, and then you call my number, so it's getting better. OK, better and better. So guys, you know what to do. Get to your cars, shake hands, and let's race. Here we go. It's now for a shot at the Pink's Finals, a hot lap competition. Two cars, one spot and a chance at $10,000 in the Pink Solo Finals. Will it be? Who do we got? We have George in the left lane, and we have Ed in the right lane. I told him, man, we got here. Free and everybody. Leave him first. You going to keep doing it? I'm on track. The cars are getting a little closer together now, so it's a matter of tree and rich, and I'm going to do that. OK. I was trying to look for him, but I couldn't see him. I knew I was in the final. You know, it was amazing. I think I left on him. Uh, he just drove around me at the end. I brought a lot, but I didn't bring enough. The last spot to get in the Pink's All Out Finals this time of ten thousand dollars. We have Frankie in the 1970 Nova in the left lane. In the right lane is Tim Fields. We have two big blocks going to battle, Rich. To do what I did all day. As soon as I see Rich move, I'm leaving and. God willing, we'll be on top end for him. Couldn't believe it made it this far, you know? I, it's unbelievable, you know? I love it. Good luck, y'all, buddy. Come on. Coming up, Tim and Frankie go all out for the last spot in the final. That's how you win on Pinks. And later, George is in the final, but can he pull off the win? He just got to drive it unless you give it to him. He just got left on. It's a must win for the left hand lane. It's down to the last race of the U.S. Army All Out Four at Bristol Dragway. He was gone before the other racer reacted. That's how you win on tanks. Rich moved, I turned loose of it, I looked over and I had about half a car on him and I could see his front end fading, so I just played her against the firewall. The race is awesome, man. He just treated me good. I reckon the cell noise problem bugged me a little bit there and I just wasn't focused as much, but hey, we tried. Hundreds of racers braved the legendary Thunder Valley track looking to race for 10 grand. 64 were chosen then immediately cut down to 32. Only 16 moved on. 16 were whittled down to eight. Those eight became four. Those four are now only two. And through it all, George Rubastello and his 63 Nova have persevered through their ninth go at the $10,000 grand prize. I'm ready. I'm ready, man. So excited to be here, I can't begin to tell you. Nine pinks all out, 10,000 miles. But George has some serious competition with Tim Fields and his 68 Camaro. That I've ran the HRA and HRA, super gas, super rod, top, you know, run a lot of bracket races, and uh, cars always take good care of them. If I do my job, the car does its job. You know, if it gets beat, it's usually because of the driver. 
All right, George, here's your $1,000. Thank Keep that money. Tim, here's your $1,000. It comes down to this. Now it's about the hot lap competition where you have to run two out of three. You get out of your vehicle, you're going to be disqualified. All right. All right, you're going to get right back down the return lane, get right back in. There's no adjustments. It is a challenge to you and your vehicle like you can't believe. So this is it. It's going to be a hot lap. That's two out of three competition for $10,000. Shake hands, gentlemen, and let's race the final time. Well, I got to focus on what we got to do here, and that's win. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Hopefully, two and out of here. Let's bring them. Fire them up. Let's go, racers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do it for. This is our Super Bowl. This is Pink's All Out. Focusing. He just kind of drive it less than give it to him. He just got left on. Here they come. It's a must win for the left hand lane. Coming up after 10,000 miles, George Rubastello drives down the most important quarter mile of his life. Please, George. It's race two of the Pink's All Out best of three hot lap final at Bristol Dragway. He spun a little bit on the last one, Rich. You saw he was a little slower off the reaction time. Tim left on him both times oh, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. I treat them and everything, you know? It was just the car slowed down. The car got hot towards the end. Yeah. On the way down, it was at 220. But, uh, you know, he had a little more. My car was hot, his was cool, so he won. <laughs> Good job, man. Good job. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Oh. Tim, tell me about your two passes. Well, the first pass, we put around the actually get let the car get too cold. Well, then about 800 feet started popping. But we nosed him out, and then the second run, it was just, you know, Big Red was there. And George, I have to ask you on that first pass, would you agree that you were outperformed by yes. Tim? And George, would you agree on that second pass, you were outperformed by Tim? Yes. All right, Tim, if that's the case, you won two of the hot lap two out of three. Right. Here is $10,000. My congratulations to be the Thank champion you. on Pink's All Out. Good job, Great brother. Job. Great right. job. That was awesome. Good job, boys. All right, this is your plaque. This is you telling you that you're the champion of Bristol Dragway 2010, the Pink's 2010 champion. Congratulations, man. Thank Hope you, you enjoy it. Mom lets us do it. My wife puts up with me for doing it, and uh, I think it'd make it a whole lot easier on all of them now. Tim Field's solid performance won the day, but George Rubastello's never give up tenacity warrants a good deal of praise, too. You'll see me again. I will be back. Yeah. 